Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Matthew Castanelli, and today I'm super excited to show you some of my favorite shortcuts and how to run them. Since I used to work at Workflow, I've been building these for a couple of years now, and in the weeks since the Shortcuts app has come out, I've gotten my collection up to over 900, which is ridiculous. I wanted to show you some of those real quick today. So here you can see how I've color coordinated them by groups and started to categorize them so that it's easier to find, but I still have a ridiculous amount. In the process of doing this, I went through and picked out some of the best ones that I enjoy using, some that are great examples for people to figure out how shortcuts works, and also some that are just fun. I'm gonna start today with one of those fun ones, which is called 99 Cent Rental of the Week. And basically what this does is use a website that's already curating the 99 Cent Rental of the Week and uses their RSS feed to grab the links automatically. So when I run this shortcut, it goes and grabs the RSS feed, gets the links, and then passes it through to iTunes so I can open it directly into the store. Here you can see I use get items from RSS feed to just get the most recent item, and then I use get contents of URL to extract that whole web page so that I can get the links from it. Get URLs from input grabs those links, and then since there's usually two and the second one is always what I want, I use get item from list at item at index number two. Then once it has the appropriate URL, it passes that into the open URLs action, which takes that link and opens the deep link into the iTunes app automatically. So the second shortcut that I want to show you is called flip photo to Instagram. And what this does is let me take a selfie that I've saved from Instagram stories where the text is actually reversed and then flip the photo so that it shows up properly when I post it. Or it's set to just take a new photo using the camera where the photo is automatically flipped. I'll tap into the shortcut here to show you how it works. The main part of this shortcut is based off of a choose for menu action which lets you choose from two different options and then depending on what you choose do something different. If you've already taken a photo in Instagram stories and then save it to your camera roll then you can choose the first option and have it get the latest photos in case you've taken a couple it's set to 10 and then it uses choose from list to pick which one you want to work with and then flip image in a horizontal direction so that it's flipped left to right instead of up and down. In the other menu option, there's just a take photo action, which opens up the camera and then lets you take a front facing photo. Once you take the shot, camera will flip it for you automatically so you don't need to use the flip action image here. Then down here at the end of the menu, you'll see that both photos are then passed into save photo album so they get saved into the photos app directly. Unfortunately, Instagram can't post these directly into your story, but shortcuts will let you use the open app action to go right into Instagram so that all of this happens in one seamless step and all you have to do is manually post the photo yourself to Instagram stories. The third shortcut that I wanna show you today is called Log Water, and I use this in the widget to log water to the health app every single day. Here at the top, we can see a list and choose from list action. We mostly just wanna pass these values into a log health sample action, and then only for three of those options, do something different. Normally, we might use choose from menu if you wanted something different to happen every single time, but choose from list acts on the list and then passes that value into the next action. However, since I'm super fancy, I also have a bunch of if actions set after I choose from the list so that depending on just a couple of those results, it'll do something differently. Here, if it equals enter amount, you can see that then I can specify how many ounces of water I want to log and add that into the health app. If you chose add missed log, then it'll let you choose the date and time for the entry and then add in your own values there again. And then finally, if you get down to check goal, this basically passes no water and just lets me check the total that I've had so far. This shortcut actually uses my body weight that I logged from the smart scale that I have and then divides that total in half to estimate the total amount of water that I should be drinking each day. If I've already hit my total goal, it says, nailed it, great job. And then this is where the check goal part comes in. If I haven't gotten there so far, it says, here's how far you are, keep up the good work. I use this app in conjunction with an app that I love called WaterMinder, which visualizes how much water you're drinking each day and what's great is as I log this throughout my day the Apple watch complication for waterminder will then update and show me my progress towards my goal also the next shortcut that I want to show for you today is called make Wi-Fi QR code what this does is let me generate a whole QR code for a custom network and password as you can see here there's two ask for input actions one asking for the network name and then one asking for the password and then once you fill that out, you choose which type of network you have. There's WEP, WPA, or WPA2, or an unencrypted network. Chances are people don't usually know this, so I just said probably this for the second result. Then down below, you can see the different strings that we use to populate those QR codes. I reverse engineered this from something that I found on Stack Overflow, but this should work as long as you enter your name and password correctly. Depending on which one you choose, it'll populate using a different result, and then down here at the end, it uses the generate QR code action to produce the QR code for you. Here, let's do a test example. 
what's the network name, testing, and what's the password, one, two, three, four. I'll choose WPA, and then I have my generated QR code. So the next shortcut that I wanna show you is called Copy Free Time. And what this does is look at your calendar, determine when all your events are, and then copies the times when you're not busy so that you can share it with someone else and say, hey, here's where I'm free. Looking at the shortcut, we can see that it starts out by asking you what day do you wanna find your availability for? And if you change, ask for inputs, different input types, you can specify text, number, URL, or date. And here, we just wanna get the date and not the time because we'll add our own time value ourselves. Then it uses the format date action to allow you to set a custom format string so you can have the date show up exactly how you want. I'll link a shortcut in below that actually shows you the table of custom date and time formatting values. And then it extracts the date from the input and stores it as a variable because we'll be manipulating this multiple times later. It adjusts one day to get to 12 p.m. midnight that day. And then it uses find calendar events to basically look for the start date between the beginning and end of the day and the end date between the end of the day and also make sure to not show any all day events either because that would mean you have no free time. Then it sorts it by the start date with the oldest one first so that we start operating in them in order and then repeats with each of them. Now this is where it gets complicated and I'm not gonna explain all of the different details because a little bit is too much for this first video. But basically it starts counting all of the events that I have and if there's more than one, grabs the first start date of the first event, and then sets my availability from the beginning of the day to the start of that event, and grabs all of the events, marks the free time that you have between them, or if you have no events, just says, I'm free all day. And then it basically just copies it to your clipboard so that you can send it to someone else right away. This shortcut I like to trigger from Spotlight Search because then I don't need to go find it and open it in the app. Basically, whenever I'm on the home screen, I can just swipe down, type in copy free time, tap the shortcut, confirm that I wanna run it, and then it'll open the app, have me pick the date, and then the time is copied to my clipboard right away. You could also change this to work purely with Siri and just use today's date if you didn't wanna pick a date because you can't actually choose from dates in the Siri interface. If you did that, then it would just run right away and you never even have to open the app itself. So the next shortcut that I wanna show you is super useful for finding out what people are saying about a link on Twitter. I call it search for link. This works as an action extension from any app, letting me share from that app, tap shortcuts, and then pick this one to have the link passed in and then sent to Twitter. Here you can see that the shortcut is set up to accept only different types of contents from apps, which basically means the shortcut won't always show up if it's not relevant to the sharing app. The link then gets passed as input from the app that's sharing it. Only the URLs are extracted so that we don't have any text. Then that link is expanded, and then it's appended to this deep link for Twitter. This deep link into Twitter, when it's passed into the open URLs action, will open up Twitter into the search field with my link already pasted there, ready to go. I've had The Verge open right here, and I wanna see what people are saying about their choice of the best music streaming service. If I go up into the top right and hit share, and then hit shortcuts, I can find my search for link shortcut. Tap it. The link will be expanded and opened right into Twitter to see what people are saying about it. I can scroll through the links, get a little taste of the conversation, and also see how the public is reacting to this. This is super useful for research, but also just to know what everybody's saying right now. So one of the other shortcuts that I wanna show you is also pretty silly, and this one is called SpongeBob. And what this does is use any text that you've pasted in, and then every other character go uppercase or lowercase as if you're mocking the person. So I'm gonna show you how the shortcut works, but it's pretty cool because I actually got a feature added to workflow back in the day just for this. So here at the beginning, you can see an ask for input and the question is already set up in the format of the text that I wanna get. The default answer is filled out with either your clipboard or the shortcut input. I just put both here to make it easier. And then it splits text using a separator of every single character. This is actually the feature that I got added just to make this stupid SpongeBob meme. Then it repeats through each character using a little calculations and modulus to figure out whether it's even or odd. If it does equal an even number, it'll change it to uppercase, and if not, it'll change it to lowercase. Then after the end repeat, all of this text is passed out and used with combined text again. Here I've set the custom separator to nothing so that it just combines everything with every character. And then just for kicks, I have the URL stored of the mocking SpongeBob image used with these memes, which is then grabbed with get contents of URL and then passed along with the combined text to my clipboard. So basically I can run the shortcut whenever I wanna make fun of someone on Twitter or just in iMessages. And it's even useful to tap on the text 
share it, and then use the SpongeBob meme on top of it there and paste over what you've written so far. Obviously this one is a little bit silly, but I think you can have some fun with it. Moving on to another shortcut, I wanted to show you one that I love called Set Bedtime from Sunrise. And here, let me demonstrate it for you. What this does is uses the weather forecast for the next few days and then just gets today's weather. Out of that forecast, it uses get details of weather conditions to grab the sunrise time. Then it subtracts eight and a half hours because I wanna get a full night of sleep before the sun comes up. It also subtracts an additional 15 minutes so that I can get ready for bed before I actually need to go to bed. And then it creates a new reminder to tell me to go to bed at 10.30 p.m. This actually goes off at 10.15 so that I can get to bed in time. And it gives me a little more information than note so that I know what time the sun rises and I can expect when I should be waking up in the morning. Finally, since this all just happens in the background and I wouldn't know whether it worked or not, I added in a show result action so that Siri can speak back to me the actual results that I got. And this actually uses some new weather actions that Shortcuts just released in their latest beta, so unfortunately you won't be able to get it just yet, but I have an older version that uses dark skies weather to do the same thing. So I have two more shortcuts to share with you, so bear with me. The next one is called BART Departures, and what this does is interacts with the local transit system here in the Bay Area, BART, and then pulls in the departure times for each of the stations. Here in the first version of the shortcut, I've set up one that lets you pick from any of the stations in the Bay Area and then pass that information along to get the departure times. It's set up using a dictionary action so that it can structure the data with a nice, friendly, readable name version of what the station is, and then just the station code that BART's API needs to get that information to me. I use choose from list to pick from this dictionary, showing me those nice display names and then passing the value along into the next action, the URL action. This, combined with get contents of URL, will call BART's internet service that provides the information for all of the different apps. This gets pulled into the shortcuts app, which then I can use to extract different values for just what I want. You do this using the get dictionary value action, which honestly is a little bit esoteric, depending on which API you're using, but here it gets the root data, gets the station, and then gets the estimated times of departure for me. Since there's a bunch of different departures, I have to repeat through each of them and get the own dictionary from each of those. Then I get all of the estimates and set them up so that they're just set for minutes, plus using the direction of the train so that I know whether it's northbound or southbound. If there's more than one train on the way, it'll combine all of those values with a comma so that when Siri reads it out, she paces herself naturally instead of just blasting through all of the numbers. Then it structures all of the information so it's nice and readable like I want it to be, and then sets the name by northbound or southbound and filters by those to make sure all of the northbound trains are next to each other and the southbound trains are too. I don't want to go the wrong direction, which I've definitely done before on BART. Then all of these values are combined onto new lines and passed into a show result action so that Siri can speak it out loud for me. Unfortunately, with the specific version of the shortcut, because you have to pick through the station names, you can't do that with Siri just yet. So I've created another version of the shortcut that just uses the Aspie station which is the closest to me. When I run the shortcut on my HomePod, Apple Watch, or just my phone or iPad, then she'll read out the station times for me directly so I know whether I should leave right away or if I have a couple minutes until the next train arrives. The last shortcut that I wanna show you is actually a function within the download file shortcut that's available in the gallery. If you go into download file itself, you'll see some of the logic at the top is set up to let this work from the action extension or the widget. If it counts the items passed into the shortcut and there's nothing, it can assume it's run from the widget, not the action extension, and so it just gets the clipboard. Otherwise, if there is more than zero pieces of data passed in, you know it's run from the action extension, and so it gets the shortcut input from the top again. Now, real quick, I'll just show you the end before I show you the function that I've added, but it gets the URLs from any of that text, gets the content of that URL, and lets me save it into the files app. So up here you'll see the run shortcut action, and this is what enables me to run another shortcut as a function within the original shortcut. Going into the other shortcut, we can see it's called now or later network. And this shortcut is set up using some scripting actions to allow me to determine if I'm on a cellular plan, remind me to download this later and otherwise download it right now. This works by getting the network details and then getting the carrier name. Since I'm on Verizon, it has to equal Verizon for me to be on the cellular network. Otherwise, I can assume I'm on Wi-Fi or I'm just not connected at all but usually that doesn't happen. So if it does equal Verizon, then it lets me choose from a menu because I might actually still wanna download this now. I can just look up at the top of the phone and see how much signal I have. 
and then if it's weak, I tap weak and it adds it later. Or if it's strong, I can continue back to the download file shortcut and then just continue from there. So if I've chosen weak, you can see here that I've set up a reminder to remind me at a specific location within 50 feet to download that shortcut with the link paste in the notes below. You can fill out this address with something like home or work to determine where you wanna download it from. That reminder is then set to just go off and then there's exit shortcut down here since I don't want to continue on and download the file in the other shortcut. If I do have a strong network, then I just want nothing to happen. And so I've used the nothing action. Once this subroutine in the other shortcut finishes, it'll then continue on with the download file action. Basically, this only does anything if I'm not on Wi-Fi. If I am on Wi-Fi, this will just continue back and download the file for me. I like to use the shortcut because I don't like blowing through my data when I don't actually have to be. Plus, it also demonstrates some of the ways you can use the scripting actions to have something different depending on your status of your device. There's not as many scripting actions that I'd like to see, and hopefully we get more access to controlling things like accessibility tools in the future, but for now, I'm good with this. And those are just some of my top shortcuts. I actually have 12 for you here to download, plus the additional one for custom date time formatting, and I'll be sharing tons more on my own website and on Twitter soon. If you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe to get new videos each week, and if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below and I'll be happy to answer for you. I really wanna hear what people like from this channel so far and also what they still need to get further with shortcuts, but there will be more coming soon, so stay tuned. In the meantime, have fun playing with these shortcuts, hit me up if you get stuck, and have a great day. This is the third time I've made this video.